Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is Living Stories, featuring voices from the collections of the Baylor University Institute for Oral History. I'm Louis Mazé. An annual tradition for many students and teachers is looking for summer employment. During the 1940s, these jobs were becoming easier to find with a recovering American economy and the war overseas. Jane Martin, former missionary in East Africa, lists a few of the summer jobs that she held in the 1940s to pay her way through Mars Hill College in North Carolina. I worked for the government at the Department of Interior, and I oh. worked for the Department of Navy. In Washington, D.C., those yeah. things are possible. You know, but you don't oh. say that I, you were sorting mail and things like that. <laughs> you were, yes. I worked one summer for a, a community uh, program for underprivileged children. I worked for a department store. But I wasn't working in the store, I was in the warehouse. And to my amazement, they came to me one day and I thought, oh my, have I done something wrong? And they said, come with us, we want to talk to you about something. And they put me on the loading dock as a 14-year-old mm. to mm. receive the trucks as they came in. Their concern was, I, had a, I was sitting in a little enclosed room, their concern was that the language would be pretty bad, but when the truckers arrived bringing in the goods for the department store, mm -hmm. they see this young teenager <laughs> and they, they minded their language. Dr. Eugene Judd, former executive director of Caritas in Waco, remembers an encounter he had while teaching in Corpus Christi. At the end of that year, we had a big PTA meeting on the end of the year. A man came up, he was a big old guy, his name was George Bellows. He said he just wanted to meet the uh, teacher that helped his son become a public speaker. I accepted his uh, comments, and that was fine. Judd describes how that meeting helped him in the summer of 1941, when he was looking for a temporary job. Teacher always did it in the night. So uh, I went out to the Naval Air Station. Just everybody would be going out there from all over the country. They, they were flying. So go to the personnel department and I sat there a long time waiting for my turn and one of the guys who came in I said who are you waiting for and he said I come and wait and see George Fellows and I said who's he and he said oh he's the guy that runs this place and I said uh, is he uh, George Fellows Jr.'s dad he said yeah and that's, he said I'm George's good friend so I, they gave me an idea so instead of going saying personnel man or filling out all the forms. Well, I went in to see George Bell. I introduced him. He remembered me. He asked what I wanted, and I told him I wanted some job. And he just said, uh, he buzzed his little buzzer, called for his personnel director, and he says, put this man on. The, the personnel director was very smart. He asked me a question or two, and he said, I'll tell you what, you report here tomorrow, you report in my department. You'll be one of the personnel. So I became one of the members of the personnel staff. As long as a college education is not free and educators are underpaid, many students and teachers will continue to seek out temporary jobs during the summer months. Living Stories is heard every Tuesday on 103.3 FM Waco, NPR. For more information about this program or the Institute for Oral History, visit baylor.edu slash livingstories.